Okay, uh, good evening. Uh, this is uh, Professor uh, David J. Dilothrius. Okay, uh, <coughs> my topic for tonight will be the so-called uh, derivation of hyperbolic cosine of any function by using Maclaurin series of expansion. Okay, uh, let's proceed. I will check my camera. Oh, it's fine. Okay, uh, <coughs> let's proceed. Uh, our topic for tonight uh, will still be uh, Advanced Mathematics, lesson number 43. It will be the derivation of hyperbolic cosine by using Maclaurin series of expansion. Uh, it will still be... It's a simple problem because uh, we passed by the hyperbolic sign already. So at least we have an idea on how to bring out the solution. Okay. <clears throat> the problem uh, actually is uh, derive hyperbolic cosine of x by using Maclaurin series of expansion. So the problem is asking uh, hyperbolic cosine of x by using Maclaurin series of expansion. And uh, we got an example problem. Uh, what will be the hyperbolic cosine? Uh, the given problem is a hyperbolic cosine of 0.3. Okay, what will be the value? So by deriving the equivalent of hyperbolic cosine of x, by using Maclaurin's, we got an equation here. And to check the correctness or validity of the equation, because uh, what will come out with is actually a general equation. What will be hyperbolic cosine of 0.3? By using that uh, derived equation. Okay, uh, let's proceed. <coughs> the solution will be a simple one for tonight. Okay, uh, we now know from the previous lessons that uh, e to the x by using Maclaurin series of expansion is actually this equation here. That is 1 plus x, x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial plus some other values. Uh, we start at, uh, we stop at x to the fifth, okay? Uh, these are all plus, 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 because if we try to take the derivative of the exponent, it's a plus. So the change does not alternate from plus to minus, unlike on the e to the minus x. Okay, uh, let's try to bring out the equivalent of e to the minus x by using Maclaurin's, and that was actually derived from the previous discussions, that is, a raised to negative x is 1 minus x plus x squared over 2 factorial minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial minus x to the fifth over 5 factorial plus some other values. For e to the negative x, the sign of the resulting right-hand side actually alternates from a positive to negative. So this is actually plus, minus, this is plus, minus, this is plus, minus. Okay? Because if we try to take the derivative of the exponent, it alternates from a positive value to a negative value. That's so this is plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. Unlike in the e to the x, it does not change because this is plus. So these are all plus. But the <coughs> uh, equation on each of the right-hand side are actually almost the same except for the sign. So for e to the x, it is this. e to the minus x is this. Okay, uh, we will try to perform the operation addition. Okay, we will add, meaning... Uh, the first uh, Maclaurin's expansion of e to the x, we add it to the value of e raised to negative x. So the operation is actually plus. Right? So on the left hand side, e to the x plus e to the minus x 
Oh, obviously, the sine of this is plus, right? So if the operation is plus, and this is plus, what will come out from the overall sign will still be plus. So the left hand side, if we try to add, it will be e to the x plus the operation is addition, right? e to the negative x. But just in case this is negative, that's a different story. This will become negative, but this is plus, right? So the left hand side is e to the x plus e to the minus x equal to. Okay, let's try to take the summation of the right hand side. The summation of the right hand side, it will be a little bit complicated, but uh, we write it legibly and we align similar terms, those similar terms. So these are all pure constant, x terms, x square terms, x cubed terms, x to the fourth, and x to the fifth. So if we try to add, it's easy, right? Uh, 1 plus 1 is actually 2. Okay? Plus x plus open quantity negative x. Okay? A plus in a minus will still be minus. So if we try to combine this one, this is plus, this minus, so they try to cancel out. Right? For the x squared, the operation is plus, right? x squared over 2 factorial plus x squared over 2 factorial. This is plus. So the sign of this will not change, right? A plus in a plus will still be plus. So actually, if we try to combine this one, <laughs> uh, they are similar. Right? So this is one, this is one. So it is actually twice the, what they call this uh, equation x squared over 2 factorial. The summation of this is just twice uh, one of the terms. So this is 2 x squared over 2 factorial. For x cubed, this is plus and this is a minus, the operation is plus, right? A minus and a plus will still be minus. So if we try to combine this one, <laughs> this is plus, this is minus, similar terms, they try to cancel out. Right? So this is plus zero. For x to the fourth, x to the fourth over four factorial plus open quantity x to the port over factorial a plus in a plus will still be plus right so the sign of this will not change and if we try to combine this one they are similar right so the summation will be will just be simply twice one of the terms that is twice x to the port over port factorial plus for the x to the fifth term, this is uh, x to the fifth over 5 factorial plus open quantity negative x to the fifth over 5 factorial. A minus and a plus, it will still be minus. And if we try to combine this one, okay, a plus is minus, they try to cancel out. Plus some other terms. Okay, simplifying. The right hand side will still be e to the x plus e to the minus x. Oh, uh, this is minus x. Right? Equal to. Uh, there is a 2 here. This is gone. This is gone. Right? Okay? So what remains on the right hand side will just be simply 3 terms. Ex excluding the other terms that uh, we will neglect. So this is 2. We got it 2 here, we got it 2, so we factor out 2 times open quantity. A 2 is actually 2 times 1, so what remains inside will be 1. Okay, next one will be x squared over 2 factorial, we bring out 2, okay. Next one, x to the power over 4 factorial, we bring out 2 also, plus quantity, plus some other negligible values. And if we try to simplify this one, uh, we bracket all the terms, then we will multiply all the terms by one half. So the left hand side multiplied by one half, it will be one half times e to the x plus e to the minus x. Equal to, for the right hand side, 
2 multiplied by this quantity multiplied by 1 half here, this 2 here cancel with this. So what will remain on the right will just be simply the terms inside the quantity. That is 1 plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial plus some other negligible values. Okay, I will try to check my camera. Oh, it's still fine. But uh, <coughs> the left-hand side, uh, if you try to recall the definition of hyperbolic cosine, if you try to Google it, then bring out the equation on how to take the value of hyperbolic cosine in terms of an exponential function. Hyperbolic cosine of x is actually one half of e to the x plus e to the minus x, meaning the equivalent of this is actually hyperbolic cosine. So instead of writing this one, okay, since uh, this one here is actually hyperbolic cosine of x, and this should now be equal to 1 plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial plus some other negligible values which we will not include anymore. Okay, so in general now, the general equation on how to take the value of hyperbolic cosine. This is read as hyperbolic cosine of x. This h here refers to hyperbolic and this c y here refers to cosine. So if we try to read this one, it will, it will be read hyperbolic cosine of x. That's the proper way on how to read it. So in general now, okay, hyperbolic cosine of x will be equal to 1 plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial plus da, da, da. So this is now our general equation on how to take the value of hyperbolic cosine of x. So that's our answer, the first one. So meaning, this hyperbolic cosine of x is actually 1 plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial plus some other negligible values. Oh, that's our answer. And as, a, as an additional topic for tonight, uh, we will bring out an example on how to get the value of hyperbolic cosine by using the calculator and by using the derived equivalent by using McLaurin series of expansion. So our example for tonight will be find the hyperbolic cosine of 0.3 using McLaurin's expansion. Okay, but uh, before we will proceed with the solution by using McLaurin's series of expansion, we will try to bring out the value of hyperbolic cosine of 0.3 by using our calculator. So you just display 0.3 here. Okay, we need the hyperbolic function and the cosine. So there is a hyperbolic here. Okay, then we press cosine. The value is 1.045338. So by direct solution, by using our calculator, the value of hyperbolic cosine of 0.3 is 1.045338, up to six decimal places. Okay? And by using McLaurin series of expansion, meaning the derived formula, we'll use this one. So it's just a matter of substitution, but... Uh, if we try to substitute the value of x on the right hand side, it should be in regions. Okay? So, no, no, it's not in regions uh, it, because it's not an anchor. Uh, hyperbolic cosine of x from the derived equation is actually 1 plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the power over 4 factorial plus that, that, that. So, substituting, if x now will be 0.3, hyperbolic cosine of 0.3 now will be equal to, we'll follow this. Then we will substitute the value of x to be 0.3. So it will become 0.3 squared over uh, 2 factorial is 2 times 1. Next one is uh, 0.3 raised to the fourth power over 4 factorial. 4 factorial is actually 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 plus some other negligible values which we will not include anymore. And if we try to simplify this one, 0.3 squared over 2 is actually 0.045. You can use your calculator. And 0.3 to the raised to the fourth power 
divided by 4 factorial. 4 factorial is actually 24. Uh, this should be a small value divided by 24, so it will be a negligible value, less than 0. So what comes out, if we try to simplify this one, is actually point, uh, three zeros, point zero zero three three eight. And if we try to add the last two values, uh, because the first one is 1, right? It should be point zero four five three three eight. And if we add the first uh, unity number, 1 plus this is actually 1.045338. So the <coughs> value of hyperbolic cosine of 0.3 by using the derived equation is actually 1.045338. Now uh, we see it here, QED. Uh, QED is actually a Latin word and it means uh, uh, it was proven to be true. Good erat demonstrandum. Okay, QED. Okay. Oh, that's it, guys. So, our topic to, for tonight, which is the derivation of the so called hyperbolic cosine by using McLaren's, it is this. So, the derived formula is this one. And as a proof to the correctness and validity of our uh, derived formula, we bring out an example. And by using our calculator, this is the value. And by using the direct formula, the value is still the same. That's it. So, for those of you who are taking up advanced mathematics, this is for you guys. If you want to subscribe to my channel, my channel is at youtube.com slash at proof David J. If you want to share it, please click share. Okay, uh, good evening from Los Angeles.